Okay, friends, today I've uh, discovered, it was this morning, and I'm telling you right now today, that I discovered what MAGTOW is. Uh, MGTOW, uh, men going their own way. And apparently these are single guys that really, uh, I presume that they're not absolutely determined to never get married, but they are determined that they're not interested in marriage as a goal. And that, uh, okay, I mean, I think this basically comes from Disney and the radio. Every single song is about romance. It wasn't always that way. All right, uh, you know, people say, where did this come from? Uh, it came from the movies and, you know, and it was, it's just the topic. So, um, now, I, I want to prepare you here for what Yogi's going to say. Yeah, when, when you're listening to someone who has a certain accent, it is very important for you to prepare yourself so you are able to listen. And then when that person starts to speak, then you are able to understand what they're saying. And what and I have ever my experience is that where Fluffy was wrong, that people do not bob their heads when they talk like that. They actually older and very tall. So here, let Yogi uh, say what Yogi had to say and go ahead and listen. You know, at first, it, it's confusing. Oh, wait. Oh, the stereotype was wrong. Okay, now, before the SJWs get angry, you have to have standing to make an accusation. I don't think Yogi is going to be angry about that. Look, I'm over in Asia. I've been in Taiwan for two years. Well, two years, 10 years. I'm, I'm getting old. I'm 38, so I'm geriatric. I was MAGTAL before MAGTAL was a thing. And so I'm happy to see, like, I discovered this this morning. I'm like, wow, you mean there's a label that I can give all the idiots so maybe they'll shut up and go away and I have to try to explain concepts that they don't have little boxes for already? Uh, fat chance. People leaving you alone letting you live your life uh, probably won't happen. But I didn't know about this MAGTOW thing because I've been in Asia 10 years and I can't just walk it on the street and listen to what the Americans are saying. And I don't spend all that much time on social media. I mean, I'm wired. I follow politics. I know news. I've, I was right about just another prediction this last week. John Kelly getting in trouble over Pacific Daily Times. Um, I was talking about how the guy that wrote the New York Times essay was probably someone like him. Anyhow, but like I follow and keep up with events, but trends like this, I, I didn't know what an SJW was until a friend told me. And the reason is because I'm MAGTOW. I'm busy. I'm doing things. I'm being productive. I'm getting stuff done. So I'm, I don't live in a in a box or under a rock. Uh, I just prefer to to be productive and, and and accomplish things. I want good things to happen to the society and to the world. And chasing the opposite sex so that I can produce babies and behaving as if I should be on you know like like if we were reverse like we were the unintelligence and uh, the the hippopotami were the sentient species that. The, um, when is someone going to get a sound ordinance about motorcycles that have mufflers that interrupt podcasts? Um, anyhow, I, I just, I've had that, this MAGTOW realization this morning. So here Zach is talking with Yogi about, uh, some of this, uh, this conservative realization movement. Yogi talks about how, uh, him going MAGTOW, so to speak, uh, I'm, I'm summarizing, it wasn't really so much political ideology, it was just about what men should be and not being a man whore. So, now, see, you know, again, I was kind of always there, sort of. Um, and so, you know, I'm watching other people come to the realization that I sort of had, for whatever reason, maybe it was my upbringing, I was given a lot of positive, good information when I was a kid. And maybe if it weren't for that, I would have kind of gone away and then come back or whatever. But I, you know, just whatever, it was what it was. But I'm listening to these guys. And I'm going, yeah, this is great. Okay, I want you to listen to what Yogi has to say. And then I'm going to try to give words to what he's describing because he's got a really good point here. Um, where is Le Mouse? Okay. Confusing because what they say in the manosphere is that they're trad cons. Conservatives are trad cons because they're talking about going back to That's old sad. ways of doing things. And by that regard, I would consider myself, you know, more of a progressive, but I don't use that label because it's horrible. <laughs> but uh -huh. in terms of like a future that values individuality, but also I, I want to pause this. I want to, I've, I've had criticism before. I'm moving around during the video to make sure that I'm not just re-airing. This isn't Mystery Science Theater 3000 where they watch a movie uh, and sit in front of it. I'm, I'm not duplicating other people's content, I'm sharing content and then talking about it. So I have to move during this video to make sure that this is ethical and stuff. And if you're not familiar with that, then now you know. All right, so we're going. I, I like what both of these guys are having to say. Uh, we'll continue listening to Yogi. Also values relationships. I think there is a future that very few people are capable of understanding in today's climate because they've, they've bought into feminism 
or they're conservatives and they're into being a trad con. I'm not into being a tra- by trad con. He's talking about old fogey Bible thumper type. Maybe I'm really using rough summaries to try to make sure you're following this. We're, we're almost done listening to this trad con. And the main reason is because there, I, I would rather take as much value from traditional wisdom as possible uh, without the social constraints. And I think there's a middle ground. Well, okay. Um, what Yogi's talking about is, well, there's a word for it. I'm going to let, I really want him to go on a little bit, but what he's talking about here, there's a word for what he's talking about. I really want to have like the traditional value without like having this, this enormous constraints. You know, you think about tradition, it can feel constraining at times. There's a term for all this. What we're, what we've done is get rid of tradition entirely, get rid of social constraints almost entirely where However, that has become a social constraint in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And that's not healthy because then there's no cohesiveness. Mm -hmm. And as a result, uh, I think what I really like about the conservative side of things is they value the strength of a nuclear family and how that can create, allow a society to prosper. That being said, I think it really depends on the society because the nuclear family thing, I don't know what the history is behind it, but it's the Bible is the history behind it. Hasn't always really been a thing. Thank you. It hasn't always been a thing. I, I get this when I'm over in Asia that, that there are these biblical ideas and then I try to tell pastors, look, you can't gossip. That's that's wrong. That's biblically wrong. They say, that's your American interpretation. No, it's not American. It's Bible that was adopted in America. So the nuclear family was not an American thing and it hasn't been around everywhere. It was a Bible thing. Look at the pilgrims, the influence that they, this Bible was basically talking about what Yogi is talking about liking. And that's why the pilgrims came to America so that you wouldn't have England's political, you know, uh, battles and all the, the politics of the church and government and so forth, messing with people, telling them what their values should be, uh, leaving uh, Yogi free to, you know, uh, have the opinions he wants. The term for this, there's a term for this. It's called a renaissance. When, when we look back at our roots so that we can understand where we came from as the basis for freely growing and flourishing more based on what makes us strong, that's a renaissance. It's called a renaissance. Now, the, you know, what he was describing is it's, it's like having no tradition, having no base, and that's a constraint in and of itself. It's like if you want to value the past, you're bad. That's the vibe I get from the left. And if they don't want me to get that vibe, they sure have me fooled. Because it's like they're so anti-tradition that you're not allowed to be tradition, which is a new tradition in and of itself. The problem with this this, this hatred of one's own roots is that it's, it's like they want to be a tree that just cuts himself off from the roots. Well, uh, newsflash, that's a tree that's going to die. They want to be free to move wherever they want, go wherever they want. They want to have, you know, whatever they want to have, whatever genitals they want. They want to have whatever X and Y chromosomes they want. And it's not that they want to change those things every moment of every day. They just want the freedom to. It's like, well, shouldn't I be able to? No, you shouldn't. You should be what you are. We should have things that we cannot change so that we can accept them and then change the other things which we can. And we need wisdom to know the difference. That's the serenity prayer. And it's very liberating to know that you don't have to have an opinion about everything that you want to be. Some things are just set that way and you're able to focus on other things like being busy and getting to work. And that's what Magtow is all about. So thank you very much, Yogi. And thank you, Zach, for interviewing him. And uh, that I guess is my Magtow coming out story. Cheerio.